Mr. Krecko, how would you describe the prospects of the ruling party Fidesz and its left-wing opposition one year before the elections? I would say that despite Fidesz have lost a lot of supporters, they are still uh, far the strongest political force in the Hungarian landscape. Right now, if we compare the uh, number of votes that Fidesz have, it's more than uh, 2 million. And uh, the number of votes that the left-wing opposition have, it's around 1.5 million. Uh, it's quite a big distance. Uh, and given that Jobbik, the radical right political force, is also on the political landscape in Hungary, uh, I think that uh, if the left-wing opposition want to uh, guarantee more or least uh, their victory, they have to gather one million more votes in a country where the overall electorate is uh, just eight million people. So this is not a mission impossible, but this is uh, quite a difficult task and the opposition uh, need to do a lot to mobilize their possible supporters. What are the realistical possible scenarios for the parliamentary elections of 2014? We have identified five scenarios at Political Capital Institute. Um, the first would be a huge victory of Fidesz uh, with a two-thirds uh, majority in the next, uh, after the next election as well. This is not a very likely scenario, even if the new election system makes it pretty easy for a, a strong political force to make a two-thirds uh, majority. Uh, the consequence of this scenario would be uh, the continuation of the unorthodox economic and uh, pol economic policy and uh, governmental policy, the transformation, uh, continuation of the transformation of the uh, overall uh, political system, and uh, an even uh, greater distance uh, from the West and uh, continuing shift uh, towards the East. A second scenario is that Fidesz, this is the most likely at this moment, that Fidesz will uh, have a slight victory. Uh, they can form uh, a majority government, but not a two-thirds government. Not, they won't have a constitutional majority, just a simple majority. Uh, what means that they have to make some compromises, in some cases with the opposition. It means that in this case, there would be some slight uh, chance for a correction, uh, both in economic policy and both in, in uh, political terms, and maybe some uh, correction even in constitutional uh, matters. Uh, but the continuation of the unorthodox uh, polit political approach and the freedom fight would continue. The third scenario would be a deadlock. Uh, that would mean that uh, neither the left-wing uh, opposition nor the uh, current Fidesz uh, side could form a government uh, because of the because of Jobbik uh, that will be the member of the parliament in the next term for sure as well. In this uh, scenario, we would expect that after uh, long negotiations. Uh, there could be an early election because even if a minority government would form, for example, Fidesz uh, could form a minority government with the external support of Jobbik, it could uh, easily collapse and the external support would be uh, near zero for such uh, uh, government. So we would expect that uh, it would lead to an early scenario in Hungary. The Grand Coalition is something that uh, you can exclude for sure because it would destroy the electoral base of both the left and both the right. The fourth scenario would be uh, an, um, that the current left-wing opposition, the Socialist Party and the Together 2014 movement, Bajnai Gordon's movement, would form uh, together 
uh, a government, a majority government, but even so they will uh, face a lot of uh, checks and balances from the current governmental side. Because in a lot of institutions, uh, Fidesz have appointed uh, some leaders uh, that are loyal to them, and it would mean that uh, they need to have a lot of compromises uh, with Fidesz. And Fidesz from opposition could blackmail uh, this government. So uh, what we would expect is that it could be uh, a pretty fragile uh, government, and uh, be because of the strong pressure from uh, Fidesz, uh, it is also possible that it could lead uh, to an early election, and on an early election the left could uh, try to form a two-thirds uh, majority uh, in the parliament, and it could enable them, and this is the fifth scenario, the two-thirds majority, a super uh, majority of the current left, which is uh, a pretty unlikely scenario at this moment. Um, it uh, could lead to a uh, lead uh, real uh, system transformation again, uh, a withdrawal of, of a lot of uh, laws and constitutional amendments that Fidesz uh, have made, and a return to a more, let's say, orthodox uh, policy approach, economic policy approach, and even diplomatic approach, uh, and an improved relationship uh, with the West and a big. Uh, bit bigger distance uh, from the East. And in this uh, latest scenario, and the last two scenarios, I think even the German-Hungarian relations could be less tense uh, than uh, the other scenarios. Mm. What would a Fidesz victory signify for Hungary and for its European partners, according to you? Mm -hmm. um, the main question is that uh, will Fidesz be able to consolidate its system, as uh, he mentioned a lot of times that he aims to, or not. Because this kind of revolutionary uh, system and rhetoric that they have followed so far, uh, it, le it leads to a political approach that it's pretty difficult uh, to consolidate uh, anyway. But without a consolidation, I am pretty convinced uh, that this system can collapse because of the lot of conflicts it, uh, it raises uh, especially with, uh, with uh, the Western partners uh, of Hungary, including uh, Germany. So I think without a consolidation, uh, in case of a Fidesz victory, uh, there can be a collapse on the uh, governmental side. If there will be uh, some kind of correction in economic policy and even in diplomacy, uh, they can have the chance to to uh, make a more uh, moderate, a more uh, modest governance in the next term. In your opinion, what will decide the parliamentary elections of 2014? The main question is about uh, how the left will be able to mobilize their possible uh, voters. The right wing is not expected to broaden its voter base in a significant level, but right now there are 50% of the undecided voters. And uh, the question is that the left, uh, will the left be able to gather at least one million voters uh, from this undecided camp with a strong uh, campaign, bidding on the existing anger uh, and resentment in the society against the uh, current government or not? So I would say that uh, the, the main question is here uh, is on the opposition side. And what could change still within the next 12 months in the political landscape? I think Fidesz can try to use more moderate rhetorics uh, in uh, diplomacy, and they could even try to use a more moderate uh, language in domestic policy as well. But the overall logic of the governance uh, won't change. So I think it's more about window dressing uh, and a, a centrist approach before the elections and not a fundamental uh, change. I think this kind of freedom fight of the government is something that is really difficult uh, to stop. And even uh, there is a strong need for enemies on the governmental side. Uh, to fight with, and uh, that's why I expect uh, that the, there will be no real fundamental change in, in the content of the governance in the next uh, one year. But uh, for sure, as the campaign approaches, uh, the political uh, landscape will be uh, even more tense and, and more, it will mobilize more voters that, uh, than it mobilizes at this moment.